New tech for monitoring the air quality in your home. Welcome back to another Textination interview. I'm Fred Fishkin. Joining us are Dr. Mary Pernicki, Director of Air Pollution and Health Research at Stanford University, and Larry Eason, Senior Vice President of Business Development and Impact Strategy at a company called AirNOS, A-E-R-N-O-S. Thank you for joining us, Larry and Mary. Thank you. Thanks, Fred. Great to be with you. What we're talking about is a new device just launched on Indiegogo called the Air Home, A-E-R Home. Uh, Larry, maybe you go first and give us a little bit of the overview here, what this is. Sure. So Air Home is an indoor air quality monitor <clears throat> that does the you know, key pollutants like the gases in the air, ozone and nitrogen dioxide and volatile organic compounds and then also particulate matter, both the large particles and the smaller particles. The, the things that, that you know, the average family would wanna know um, is going on inside the home with their air, so they can take specific actions to improve the air quality and reduce exposure and improve health. And the Air Home comes with an app that's very solutions oriented. It's, it's really meant to help uh, the consumer identify the problems and make uh, expert recommendations about things that they can do, uh, again, to clean up the air, or just have a healthier home. Um, so that's kind of a quick overview. We could drill down into the details, but that gives you a sense of, of what Air Home is and what we're launching today. That's great. Uh, now tell us, Mary, why this is important and a bit about the partnership and Stanford's involvement here. Sure. So, you know, air quality is, is um, super important because we know that that impacts your health. From the wildfires, especially, um, we know that when we breathe in smoke, you know, it can harm us in many ways. Um, people typically aren't aware of their indoor air quality, um, and it's something to be aware of um, and monitor, especially during, you know, uh, wildfire season. And if you live in an area where there's poor air quality, um, and so we're partnering with. Um, uh, Aranos um, to hopefully, you know, do some good scientific research uh, and provide some answers as to uh, how uh, indoor air quality um, impact, impacts our health. Well, tell me how that's going to work in this partnership that, that you have with, with the company. And there's a, the ability for, for people, for buyers on Indiegogo to actually donate devices to Stanford, right? Yeah, so, I mean, we do a lot of different types of research studies, um, but right now we're trying to focus on looking at how air quality in schools um, impacts children. You know, there's been some studies that have shown that air quality, you know, impacts learning. Uh, we know that air quality impacts, you know, asthma rates um, and exacerbations with children. And so it's, it's an area that um, needs some, some attention and some research because we really don't know what the air quality is you know, um, typically inside a classroom. Um, and so we're interested in how, um, you know, the air quality, air purification will improve immune health, health in general uh, for a child. Larry, how did this whole thing come about? Well, it's a, um, I mean, we, we have been partnered, you know, and talking with Mary for a number of years to support uh, various research that she's doing and um, Air Home came about in part because of that, those conversations and, and that relationship. Um, Dr. Pernicki and, and her team were looking for something that could go in a home and you could plug it in and, and it could connect to Wi-Fi and the family wouldn't have to think about it, but the research scientists would have access to that data via the cloud. And so, you know, we developed Air Home to be able to support that work and we realized, well, you know, let's launch this on Indiegogo. Let's get you know, a large uh, initial order drive down the cost of this. And then we realized, well, wait a second, you know, people on Indiegogo are health conscious and care a lot about, you know, the environment and children's health. And so let's offer the opportunity for people to buy and gift discounted uh, units to Stanford. And, um, you know, we're only a few hours in, but I can tell you that that part of it's going, you know, <laughs> it's going pretty well. So, uh, so we're, we're excited about that. I mean, as, as you probably, you know, know the, the information uh, about outdoor air quality, you know, hyper-local, like what's going on right outside of my home here in, in Pomona, 
you know, that's getting better and, and better. It's not perfect, but it's getting a lot better. But we spend 90% of our time inside the home and people really don't know what's, what they're breathing inside their home. Um, and so, you know, this is an opportunity for folks to learn about that and take actions in their own home and then help Dr. Pernicki and her colleagues with this, you know, really essential research um, that could help drive, you know, better, better policy and better recommendations for state and local national officials and, and school officials and, and families as well. Mary, the, the uh, wildfires that have raged all, all summer long, I think still going, um, affected a lot of people in California. But, but beyond that, I'm in New Jersey. We had poor air quality for, for quite some time, too, as a result of, of fires out west. So right. tell, tell us ab about the dangers, what people should know. And obviously, it's more than just the fires because, you know, a lot of people are want to save energy. And so they seal up their homes real tight. And that's right. not always the healthiest thing, is it? Right. No. So uh, we know, you know, from various studies, when someone's exposed to wildfire smoke, there can be increases in respiratory problems like asthma attacks, COPD exacerbations, or um, cardiovascular problems like heart attacks, arrhythmias, also strokes. But a study actually just came out uh, yesterday looking globally. This is a global health problem. And that they found that if you just look at um, death rates associated with wildfires, you know, there's, there's a significant proportion um, attributed to all cause, respiratory, and cardiac related um, death rates worldwide. So the pollution, obviously the wildfire smoke can travel. Um, so you don't have to be very close to a fire to experience some of the, the um, health impacts. And also when that fire is over, you've got that extra uh, PM 2.5 and other pollution in the air. And that's contributing you know, globally to our, our problems with, um, with pollution. So it's, it's something that's um, relevant for everyone. You don't have to be in a wildfire prone area to be worrying about that. What are some of the things that uh, this device is going to tell me to do? Either one of you can take this uh, through, through the app. I put this in my home. I want it for my family. And it's going to give me information about the air quality and then information about what to do about it. Yeah. Yeah, educational content also around what matters and, and why it matters. But most importantly, no, nobody ever says to me, you know, tell me how bad my air is. <laughs> <laughs> they always at, they say, well, wait, I can't hold my breath. You know, what, what, am I, what am I supposed to do? And the good news is, Fred, that when you're, you know, when you're outside, there's not a whole lot you can do. You can not go outside or you can, you know, you can delay activities or whatever, but inside your home, there are actually a lot of things that you can do. You just have to know that there's a problem and focus in on what that is. And so, you know, so Air Home in the app, just as an example, you're gonna be able to look back on trends and you can see, you know, every day, like here in Los Angeles, our, our ozone, you know, ozone, the sun interacts with, you know, NO2 and VOCs and, and, it, and it creates ozone. It goes up during the day and it comes down at night. And, and that's a cycle that you see. Um, and, you know, we're going to see that cycle inside of the home too, but are we seeing that at really low levels or are we seeing that at higher levels that are, you know, up, you know, at or near or above the levels that EPA says is safe? If I'm seeing that kind of a trend and maybe I'm looking at what, what's happening, I create a group with my neighbors and we can kind of benchmark our air together. You can do that with the app. You know, I can see that, you know, I'm just going along with what's going on outside. I need to just do a little bit more weather stripping or perhaps without thinking because it's nice outside, I'm opening up the windows during the day when the ozone is actually particularly problematic. And, and Air Home will tell you, you know, when it's okay to open up the air, you know, the, the windows and, and when it's not. Um, that's kind of a simple example, but another example would be, you know, if you're, you see a spike every night at seven or 7.30 and you realize, well, I'm, you know, in VOCs, well, I'm cooking. And all I need to do, to do is turn the fan on over my stove and I'm gonna reduce the amount of VOCs. I have a friend who was sharing with me that her husband likes to burn incense in the house. Um, she doesn't like it, but he does. And you know, she, now she can show him the app and say, you know, this is particle matter and VOCs that you're, <laughs> that you're putting in, in the home. You know, these are the kinds of things that, that, that we really don't think about because we're just not in touch with the air quality inside the house. 
And so what Air Home is gonna do and the app is gonna do is just to help you pinpoint those things and give you those, sec those, those recommendations you know, when they're relevant, sort of, you know, in real time, and then also give you that opportunity to, to look at the trends over time and just help you uh, with the problem solving. You know, some people will need an air purifier because maybe they live near a freeway. Um, other folks may not need a purifier, and this will help you get on top of the pollutants in your home and help you figure those things out. And it will let me know how well that air purifier, if I have one, is working? Well, that's the other, that's such a good point, yes. I mean, it, not only the air purifier, but also these other actions that you're taking. So if I am noticing, you know, ozone going up and down and it's higher than I want it to be inside the home um, and I do some weather stripping and I'm a little bit more conscious of when I open and close my windows, you know, I'll be able to tell if I'm actually creating a change inside the home, you'll see that. Um, and again, yeah, turning on the air purifier, how much is that helping? Um, those are exactly the kinds of things that Air Home will help you to understand. And that's why we say it, it helps to make you smarter about your indoor air. It, it might also help you make better health decisions if you're one who uh, smokes cigarettes. Um, you're going to see what happens inside a home and what, you know, your family's going to be breathing if you do that. And, you know, it may encourage you to, to not do it or at least not do it inside and expose others because you'll see what pollution you're actually putting into the air with that. I have a feeling it would be a family member and not the smoker who's buying this. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> are, are you tackling at all the, the radon issue, which is a problem in some parts of the country, or this is not designed for that? This is not designed for that. I'll let Mary speak to whether or not um, they're working on that at, at the Sean Parker uh, Center, but this is not designed uh, for, for radon, no. Yeah, we, we actually have not studied that um, either. Yeah. Is there is there a greater prevalence? I mean, anecdotally, you hear of more people with allergy issues and and asthma problems today. It seems than say when I was growing up. Is it more prevalent? Uh, it, it is in terms of especially with the climate change. It has changed the pollen season. It's made the pollen season longer, more intense. Um, and so those people that have, um, you know, pollen induced asthma exacerbations or have, you know, hay fever, things like that, it's certainly um, been worse for those individuals with all the, the changes going on um, in our environment. Well, Larry, let's get to the nuts and bolts. Uh, let's talk about where people could find this. We mentioned that you're on Indiegogo, what the pricing is and, and how this all works. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. So we're, we're on Indiegogo as of this morning. If you go to Indiegogo and, and search for AirNOS or AirHome, A-E-R-H-O-M-E, -E, um, you'll be able to, to find it. Um, you can also find us on, on social media, on um, Facebook, you know, My Air Home on Facebook or MyAirHome.com. And those will all be, uh, we'll be directing people to, uh, to our Indiegogo page. Um, and then on the pricing, um, you can either you know, buy a unit for yourself, um, or if you wanna buy one for yourself and donate one to Stanford, the pricing for that would be $3.95. We're doing a, a pretty deep discount on, on Indiegogo Go to launch the campaign, sort of early bird special. Um, and so if you're buying it for yourself, the price will be in the 225 range, but if you're donating to Stanford, uh, those units are 195. So we're trying to make that as easy as possible to people, for people to make that, to do that gifting for the research. When would people be getting the devices if they if they do go online to order? So that these devices will, will start to ship in um, in the spring, basically March of 2022. So we'll close the campaign out in October, so mid-October, and then we'll take the rest of that time to basically you know finalize, you know, get all of the parts in and everything and start to you know ramp up our manufacturing and be able to get the volumes that we're hoping to see uh, you know from a successful campaign on, on Indiegogo. Um, so again, this is sort of an opportunity to be able to produce, you know, instead of do hundreds for Stanford and have a much higher price point, you know, we'll do thousands and we'll be able to drive that, that, that price down. But we're, we're shooting for um, March of 2022 for, for shipping these units. In time for next year's, hopefully the fire season, which we hope doesn't happen, but it probably will. It seems unavoidable. It does seem unavoidable, unfortunately. Very interesting. For more info, where's the best place for people to go? The, the easiest thing to do is to go to myairhome.com. And from myairhome.com, that'll redirect you right to the Indiegogo campaign page. Um, and uh, that's spelled my, M-Y, 
and then airhome, A-E-R-H-O-M-E.com. And that'll direct you to the Indiegogo page. Well, congratulations on the innovations. Uh, Dr. Mary Prunicki and Larry Eason, thank you so much for taking the time with us. Thank Friend, you for thank having you. us. Yeah, thanks for the time. Really appreciate it. Now this. It takes a lot of listening to build a better radio, and that's just what the folks at Sea Crane have done. Bob Crane and his crew, nestled among the rivers and tallest trees in the world in Fortuna, California, have made a habit of listening to their customers. And that's just what they've done in building the CC Skywave SSB, the Swiss Army knife of portable radios. For everyday listening to AM or FM in the yard or patio or on the nightstand, without having to drain a mobile phone battery, it's a great companion. But it is also a companion equipped for NOAA weather information and alerts that can be life-saving. You can listen to FEMA and Coast Guard transmissions too. Beyond all of that, you can tune into shortwave signals from around the world. It's compact, easy to take with you, and built to last. The CC Skywave SSB. Click on the link at textonation.com.